In January 2022, Joe Dix, who was 18 at the time, was savagely stabbed to death by three young men, Benjamin Gill, Cameron Palmer and Hans Bihari. The murder took place in the midst of a drugs and cash burglary, and a year later, at Norwich Crown Court, the men were sentenced to serve a term of a minimum 20 to 21 years each. When speaking to the press, Joe's parents, Emma and Phil Dix, said that their son was trapped in a vicious cycle when he was victimised by a gang who groomed him to sell heroin and crack, and said that Joe almost lived a double life. In addition to grieving, we have silently coped with Joe's memorial garden being destroyed and multiple malicious communications via social media. Justice may have been served. However, there are no winners from knife crime. We will never get Joe back. The ripple effects from Joe's murder is huge, not only impacting on our family and friends, but everyone who knew Joe along the in the local community. A year later, in a revenge attack against the gang Only the Money who had murdered Joe, Alfie Hammett, also aged 18, shocked shoppers after he brutally attacked Raymond James Quigley, known as James, with fatal consequences in broad daylight. Hammett was jailed for 24 years last week. Accomplice Joshua Howell, who was 17 at the time of the murder, received 20 years. Following the tragic loss of young lives, Chief Constable Paul Sanford made a direct message to the public in an effort to reassure the local community. I'm recording this message today because I'm very aware of the concern that exists throughout Norwich about the recent homicide and other knife-related incidents that have occurred in recent weeks. I want to reassure you all that this is a number, the number one priority for our force and all available spare resources are being directed to these problems to bring offenders to justice. I also want to say that these are not random attacks. The risk of being victim of a violent crime if you're not part of these groups remains incredibly low. All of that being said, these are serious crimes and we are absolutely committed to solving them and bringing the offenders to justice. Thank you. Since James Quigley's murder, Joe's parents, Emma and Phil, have described how Alfie Hammett often sent sympathetic messages, such as thinking of you, without realising he was a fellow gang member. They have shared their sadness that yet more parents will now have to go through the painful grief that they can so sadly relate to. In an effort to combat the escalating youth crime within Norwich, Joe Dix's parents, Emma and Phil, have created the Joe Dix Foundation in honour of their son. A 16-year-old boy was stabbed to death in Luton last week. Five teenagers were wounded in two shocking knife attacks there on the same day. This weekend, there was a triple stabbing in Halifax. Two young people are dead. One 21, the other just 19. Two men were stabbed to death in Leeds. Barely a day passes without more of this bloodshed. And this is the kind of response we get every time. My number one priority, uh, and the thing that keeps me up at night, is uh, the safety of Londoners. So it's not just about policing, it's not just about stop and search, that's fantastically important. It's also about wrapping your arms around the kids and putting them on the right track. The death of anyone through an act of violence is an appalling tragedy. I want to say how shocked and saddened I am that three people have lost their lives. Just words, isn't it? Just word salad, putting arms around them. Is that going to stop kids stabbing each other? It's not, is it? We all know that. For all the condolences and the talk of getting tough, the fact is the people who want to hurt us no longer fear the consequences if they do. Police numbers are down, budgets have been slashed. They've stopped taking everyday crimes even remotely seriously. When the Home Secretary announced last month that police must investigate all thefts, it was supposed to be a huge innovation. My question would be, what the hell were they doing before? Shoplifting is now out of control in Britain. Store thefts have more than doubled, and they're only getting worse. In America, it's the same issue emboldened by absurd policies on not prosecuting minor offenders. Shop shoplifting, especially of the steaming variety, with dozens and dozens of shoplifters entering a store at one time, has become an epidemic. It's little wonder that Donald Trump got an ovation over the weekend for saying this. And we will immediately stop all of the pillaging and theft. Very simply, if you rob a store, you can fully expect to be shot as you are leaving that store. There have always been horrible people. You know, it's very easy to look at the situation and say, oh, it's just because we've suddenly been giving birth to loads more horrible people. That obviously isn't the case. If we look at this 
you know, just objectively, if we look at the facts, if we look at the statistics, the studies on what causes violent crime, the single biggest predictor across the board of levels of violent crime across time and space is inequality. Why? It's not just because people are poorer and they want, you know, to access more stuff. That is a problem. It's because in a society that denies particularly young men access to advancement, then violent crime becomes something of a status symbol. This is borne out across sociological studies across time and space. It becomes, you know, um, there's an incentive to kind of steal, uh, kill someone and to steal their trainers because the it becomes is, a status I, symbol. I, I, because we haven't got those I roots for advancement of the young men. Because, I mean, Tyrus touched on a point in saying that in third world countries, you don't necessarily have this problem because there are actual social consequences, which I think is an important point you touched on. When I was a kid growing up in Ghana, if you stole something in our neighborhood, it doesn't matter who, who finds out, whether it's your neighbor or someone else, once your, your family gets to know, there will be consequences. Yeah. Sometimes your neighbor might discipline you. The issue here is a breakdown of legal and social consequences, and that's what we're missing. I there agree, actually. Be, there, has, there has to be ostracization and actual social consequences for stealing, but there also has to be legal penalties, real ones that I are agree. actually terrifying. I, I mean, I, I've got to say, I have come round. I mean, Tyrus <clears throat> talked about third world countries. You look at someone like Singapore or Hong Kong, I, I walk the streets of these places at midnight, right? You just don't get this kind of stuff yeah. there because the penalties, if you do, are severe. And I keep being told by the wishy-washy brigade, Ava, look, you know, you, you, you can't be too tough on these kids. You've got to be... A... Actually, why? Why don't we just say, right, the next time a young kid is caught with a knife on the street, they get 10 years in prison. I can tell you, it would soon stop. Well, and it, it may could. sound like I'm, I've, I've morphed criminals. into a right-wing hegbanger. I can assure you, most people in this country would share that sentiment. So why aren't we doing tougher things like that. Well, I don't know. The extreme of your argument is we turn into Saudi Arabia and then we just throw away anyone who might, you know, look like they're committing a crime or then we execute them. Which I'm not saying that. I'm talking about know. people Sorry, carrying a knife extreme, with intent to use it, argument. not for cutting up their your, cheddar cheese. And on your cheese. point there about 10 years, well, we've got a prison system at the moment that doesn't work. It doesn't rehabilitate people. And at the moment, we are turfing people out. Sorry, we're throwing them into prison and they're coming out the other side and we mm. are, they're, they're not rehabilitating. They're going back to commit more crimes. So how are you going to stop, how are you gonna stop the well, kids stabbing I, I, I each think, other? I think it goes back to what Races. I think it's a social issue. I think that we've got to really tackle inequality. You know, we've got to look at this long term rather than thinking, what's the short term solution? Throw everyone, like, you know, lock everyone up and throw away the key. Well, so I mean, hang on, hang on. Okay, okay. Well, hang on. I'll come to it. Before we look, inequality seems to me, with great respect, one of those vacuous generic terms, like a sort of catch all excuse Piss. for what is going on here. I know lots of kids who come from poor backgrounds who do not go around stabbing people because their parents. And this can apply, by the way, to, to uh, lower-class people, to middle-class people, to so-called upper-class people. I went to a fee-paying school till I was 13, then state uh, comprehensive school. I've seen all manner of people, right, and parents. The common theme of kids that behaved well, or at least felt shame and accountability if they were caught doing bad things, was strong parenting, yes. right? Teachers, yes, and authority, yes, but actually strong parenting. I've just... In research conducted by the UK Parliament in the year ending March 2023, there were 50,500 offences that year alone involving sharp instruments. Whilst the bombs might not be going off anymore, rest assured the gangs still operate and their grip on the criminality is an iron one, a vice-like grip and they're not about to loosen it anytime soon. My name is Peter Blexley. I'm a former Scotland Yard detective. The majority of my career was dedicated to tackling serious and organised crime. From London to Lancashire, and from Devon to Dundee, there are gangs operating in the UK. And quite simply, they are a danger to us all. However, we are not even halfway through this current year, and knife crime has reportedly already surged by 5%, according to the Ben Kinsella Trust.